Well, we heard earlier from Mick Davis, chair of the Holocaust Commission, about the National uh, Holocaust Memorial that's to be erected in Britain. The Prime Minister made that announcement at an event to mark the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. And the United Synagogue has launched its own project called 70 Days for 70 Years. Rabbi Andrew Shaw is the director of the project. Good evening, Rabbi Shaw. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I uh, hope you're OK. Can you tell us a bit yeah. about, about this project? Well, in essence, it's, uh, it's not the first iteration. It actually began 20 years ago when I was a student at university. Uh, I was the education head of UJS. And we created 50 days for 50 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the story comes from a, a wonderful rabbi, a Rabbi Shapira, who unfortunately lost his family in the Holocaust. And when he was asked to commemorate the Holocaust, he felt what positive things could be done. And he basically took the names of children that died in the Holocaust and gave it to school children in his school and asked them to learn in memory of these kids in memory of, of the Holocaust. And we took that concept to basically in 1995, 50 days of learning uh, for 50 years that have passed. We gave 5,000 names of students who died in the Holocaust to 5,000 students in the UK and asked them to learn what was then a pocketbook. Mm -hmm. That has now grown uh, 20 years later to today to 70 days for 70 years where we've done the same concept in f but it's not 5,000 names, it's in the UK alone over 100,000 names and certainly it's going further than that as well. And, and how many people in the UK are participating in this project? Have you any idea? We, I mean, we, we've sent out, we've just sold, I mean, basically we printed about 50,000 books and we've sold out and we've got none oh. left, we're actually having to reprint. <laughs> wow. Uh, and, it's, and it's gone literally as far north as sort of Aberdeen and, and Edinburgh and as far south as, as Bournemouth and Brighton and everything in between. So we, we know... And we don't have, we know about sort of 40,000 households are doing this, so it's, it's well over probably 100,000 people have been involved in this project this time out, which is fantastic. Do you think there's been a greater level of engagement this time for, for 70 years um, than, than there was in the, the, on the 60 years and the 50 years project? I mean, yes. I mean, obviously our numbers have grown but simply because we've obviously widened the project. But I think definitely this time around there's more of a sense of responsibility. I mean, I mixed spoke before I was listening to him. I think everyone realizes now that, you know, it's 70 years, survivors, unfortunately, is less and less, and we, we sense the need of the passing of the torch. Yeah. And I think, therefore, you know, people have felt like, I want to be a part of this. And we've certainly felt there's been a real uh, connection to the project more maybe this time than last time, yes. Yeah. Now, sometimes a project starts with lots of vigor and good intentions, but it can be difficult to maintain the momentum over a period of time such as 70 yep. days. Yep. I, know, I know that my synagogue's rabbi, Rabbi David Lewis of South Manchester Synagogue, has pulled together a, a short synopsis and, and review of the first seven days essays, which I know has been well received by the community. But, but yep. are there any formal ways to keep people engaged throughout the full 70 days to maintain that initial enthusiasm? I mean, it's an excellent question. I mean, you, you raised just before I came on the uh, what your Twitter handle is, because that's what I asked, because I just tweeted, obviously, to, to all my followers that I'm, I'm about to go on, on the Jewish Hour, because obviously we now know with, with social media, through Facebook and through Twitter, we, we regularly engage with all the, all the people in the project. And, of course, yes, each community is finding innovative ways to engage their members, because that's really what it's about. How It's not about just the launch. It's about the 70 days. So we're obviously sending out regular tweets and regular sort of blogs through our website every day say to people to try and keep them engaged because obviously it's not just about the learning it's also learning in memory of your person each mm -hmm. person gets a holocaust victim that unfortunately uh, died and they learn in their memory so it's very important for us that this is not simply just a project for 70 days but that person is kept on forever in your memory yeah now on that note i should say in, in the spirit of that of in individuality um, in our house, we're learning in order to remember that there once lived two children, Harry Rosen, who was born in France in 1937 and was murdered in 1941, aged four, and Robert Schoendorf, who was born in Amsterdam in 1938 and was murdered in Auschwitz in Poland in 1942, also aged four. Now, my wife and uh, my ten-year-old daughter uh, went to the launch at South Manchester Synagogue uh, last okay. week. Now, the launch was fine for my ten-year-old, but I just wondered, the essays in the book are perhaps not necessarily tailored to younger people, People. I just wondered if, if you were going to do something similar in the future, whether you might do something targeted at younger people? Well, I mean, my, I've also got a 10-year-old son um, who, the way we, we've, he wants to be involved in the project, uh, and the way we're doing it is obviously every Shabbat there's, an, there's a story. So we sit down, we just did the first one this week, we sat down and we went through the story, uh, and we're discussing maybe some of the contents. But yes, the book is not aimed at 10-year-olds, it's sort of aimed at kind of year nine and above, sort of 14, 15-year-olds and above. Um, and I think obviously there's, there's a, you know, you want to be able to relate to everybody. And I think we were definitely trying, I know a lot of we got a lovely idea 
in, I think, in King David in uh, in Birmingham, I think it was, or Liverpool, I can't, I've got to remember right. which one it was, sent us a lovely thing. They're doing 70 mitzvot for 70 days. Oh. They've got the kids involved in every day doing a, doing a mitzvah, an act of kindness, something very special for each other during the 70 days for the 70 years. So, again, we're very thankful to school teachers and to parents for adapting the model to fit their age groups. And certainly, as I said, with my 10-year-old son, we found a way to relate to it, and we're, we're looking forward each week to sitting down and doing the essay together, the story, and maybe discussing some of the essays as well, but not obviously, you know, fully detailed in the book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. I mean, it's great that it's, it, it can be so inclusive in that way. Now, the 70 days finishes during Pesach, I think on, on the second night of Seder, which, for the benefit of our non-Jewish listeners, is the second night of Passover, a night on which families and friends get together for a special service and a meal. I know that, that in our house we're planning to set a couple of extra places around our Seder table, but are you asking people to mark the conclusion of the 70 days around the Seder table in any way? Yes, I mean, that's what one of the things we're working on now is um, sort of the Seder preparation, meaning it's actually going to end on first night Seder. First night Seder is a Friday night this, this year uh, on Shabbat, and Saturday day or Shabbat day is the 70th day, so that's going to be the conclusion. Mm-hmm. And we thought, what, what better way, one of the reasons why it was so beautiful, we launched, again, Asher's Liberation, and we closed on Pesach, Passover, which of course is the festival of our liberation, which we kind of thought was a beautiful kind of link to the idea of, you know, the survivors of liberation, but also because, as you said, it's a family festival. People come around together, parents, grandparents, children, and the essence of the project is about Jewish identity, Jewish continuity, and it kind of fits beautifully. And yes, we are p- planning to send out readings to do at the Seder night, linking to the end of the project, your own personal con- con- conclusion of the project. Andrew, uh, it's a fabulous idea and it's obviously been very well thought through and a lot of work's gone into it. If anybody wants to find out more about it, they can go to your website, can't they? Absolutely. The website gives you every... I mean, it's not just the essay of the day. We've got the video of the day, fact of the day, tweets, everything there to really engage people on a daily basis, which is 7470.com. That's 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 70, isn't it? uh, 70FOR70.com. And, of course, the Twitter handle is at 70 days, 70 years to follow us there as well. Okay, well, thank you for that. We're going to get David to to to, to practice his Twitter on that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very well, good. Rabbi Andrew Shaw, thank you very much for speaking to us on Pleasure. Have you. a lovely evening. Thank okay. you. Bye bye.